Good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, I'm Kunal Omrigar. I am working as a director of technology uh, at Pubmatic. Uh, I look after uh, the big data and analytics division, so I'm basically responsible for the big data platform, which crunches petabytes of data, uh, you know, uh, in for, for our, uh, you know, ad server. So uh, along with me, I have Amit Kumar, who is a senior principal uh, software engineer, who is responsible for uh, designing and developing uh, the big data platform, you know, uh, batch in real time. So um, what we are going to, uh, you know, uh, cover in this talk is basically overview of Pubmatic. So I will go over in, in brief about what is Pubmatic, what does Pubmatic do, uh, our big data and analytics platform, uh, and some, you know, uh, scale, like how, what the, what's the scale of data that we handle and uh, what is our over, o overall platform looks like. We'll cover our real-time use cases and then uh, we'll cover, um, so Amit will basically cover the real-time uh, architecture uh, which we have, you know, uh, built using Data Torrent and Apex. So uh, to go over, like, the question, who is Pubmatic? What is Pubmatic? So Pubmatic is a leading advertising technology company which uh, serves publishers around the globe. So we have a proprietary ad engine which optimizes yield for publishers um, you know, by selling their inventory, by selling their ad inventory to the potential buyers. So what does that mean exactly? So uh, these media, there are a lot of media websites, uh, e-commerce websites, or any content provider websites, basically. Um, for example, if we take an example of NBC News, um, uh, or which is a news website, would put ads on their page uh, which would monetize or, or you know, make revenue for them. So, they, so users viewing the ad or clicking on the ad would generate a revenue. And that, uh, so Pubmatic uh, basically comes into picture where we optimize that revenue for, uh, for, for the publishers. So we have an ad engine which receives impressions from these websites, and we try to, uh, you know, our, our engine basically finds the right buyer for that particular ad, uh, applying different algorithms and, and technologies. The other thing that we also do is we try to find the ad which is the most relevant for the user who is doing the ad so that the, the experience is more, uh, you know, uh, uh, synonymous what the user is trying to do. And the chances are that the user is more interested in the ad that he sees and clicks, uh, which, which eventually will lead to conversion. So, um, how, how, so, so this is basically our, you know, uh, landscape. Uh, there are uh, tons of different products that we, uh, you know, work on. So typically uh, uh, inventory, inventory pricing and packaging, uh, we do brand protection for pub publishers, so we make sure our, our engine, you know, uh, scrutinizes every creative or every ad that shows up and doesn't, you know, allow any malware or any, any fraud, uh, you know, uh, impressions. Also, um, uh, you know, we, we cover different, uh, you know, devices. So we have uh, impressions coming from not just uh, websites, like the display websites, but mobiles, mobile apps, even SDKs, uh, uh, you know, which are integrated with the platform. So, so uh, okay, coming back to big data, how does Pubmatic use big data, or what, is, what, is, what are the use cases that Pubmatic uh, has for the uh, big data? So, uh, big data basically powers, um, you know, most of our algorithms that we do. So, the, so we have the optimization algorithms, which are powered by our big data. So we, we also our machine learning algorithms, which are basically doing a predictive analysis of how a, how a particular uh, you know, inventory has performed in the past and how is it going to perform you know, in the future, uh, as well as you know, uh, detecting whether a particular impression is of a certain value and you know, pricing that impression accordingly using our, you know, uh, algorithms. Our, our big data platform provides in-depth, uh, you know, in-depth reporting to our customers as well as our partners. So we have 
dashboards which will allow you to slice and dice and you know, uh, provide a lot of transparency into how the auction is you know, going on and what are uh, you know, the performance metrics that you, and, and you, can, you can basically, uh, you know, uh, even the, cus the customers and the partners, they can uh, log in and they can uh, you know, see, see those insights. It also uh, uh, you know, enables ad hoc reporting, which is uh, you know, typically used by uh, our analysts and data scientists, which take day-to-day -day decisions in terms of optimizing the inventory. Um, so to give some of the scale that we handle at Pubmatic, so we receive more than 40 billion transactions or impressions per day, which, which in turn uh, you know, uh, boils down to like 500 million transactions that we analyze. This is on a daily basis. We collect around 30 TB of data per day, uh, which is from various forms. So the largest uh, uh, form of our data is basically our own ad engine, which generates auction log, which, which might even have like more than 250 fields at times. Um, we have a huge Hadoop cluster. Uh, this is our processing cluster as well as uh, our warehouse, which is run, uh, you know, which is an edge based cluster. We have close to 20 petabyte, petabytes of data approximately in our cluster at any given point of time. And uh, our key peak ad server TPS. So in this industry, um, you also have to deal with peaks. So at a point of time, the flow of traffic would be X. And, you know, at the peak times, it'll be 2.5X of, you know, whatever the traffic is flowing through. So this is our peak uh, QPS that our ad servers handle. So these are the amount of transactions that we have to, uh, you know, uh, cover for when we are looking at a real-time pipeline or even a batch pipeline, which is pulling in impressions from Kafka. Uh, so this is like a high-level overview of how our architecture looks like. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, our ad engine generates the, the, the largest portion of our uh, uh, raw data, so which is typically a JSON format. Uh, we have um, ad servers located in six geographically different locations. Uh, so we collect that data um, from the ad servers and, and we flow it into our you know, uh, big data infrastructure using Kafka. So we use Kafka a lot. Uh, we have multiple Kafka clusters, which are uh, basically um, leverage to send data to our, you know, uh, to our platform. Uh, we have a bunch of consumers which will consume this data and push it onto HDFS in one central location. Um, and, and we um, basically use, you know, Avro and Snappy, like regular uh, uh, compression uh, algorithms to basically dump that data in HDFS. Uh, once the data is, uh, you know, uh, brought into HDFS, we have uh, our aggregation, uh, you know, uh, aggregation processing, which is typically driven by Spark and MapReduce. So uh, this will, you know, generate different views uh, for different types of customers. This will generate hourly, you know, data, which will then get rolled up to daily, weekly, monthly. So, and, and there are also some bunch of ad hoc jobs which are running out there. Um, we dump all that data into, uh, you know, all the aggregated views into HBase, um, and we run a Phoenix SQL layer on top of it, which basically allows our UI to query this data. Uh, again, HBase has uh, views uh, at different granularity as well as for different types of customers that we have, uh, and it also stores multiple terabytes of data at any given point of time uh, with an SLA. So every view has, an, uh, has its own SLA after which we prune that view. Uh, uh, the second part uh, is basically the streaming use case. Um, so uh, uh, one of our logs, which is, you know, so we also generate data when someone actually views that uh, using, you know, pixels or beacons which are fired and which will generate like a URL uh, a snippet, which which is actual raw data. And that gets pushed into Kafka as well. And we have a data torrent IPX pipeline, which is crunching that data. So we receive this data in real time. Uh, we have a bunch of operators. We have actually two dif distinct pipelines, which uh, process this data. And 
There are two use cases around it. Um, I think you can go. So, so, um, so again, the real-time use cases, I think we have um, a bunch of critical metrics that are you know, monitored uh, in the real time. Uh, so, so these are our traffic and monetization related aspects which we crunch in the real time. Uh, one of the uh, you, you know, unique use cases that we probably have is we have a ad server which has to continuously monitor how the ad, a particular you know, ad unit or a campaign has performed and keep changing the allocation so that we meet the pacing demand. So say we allocate a million impressions to be delivered for a campaign. So based on the peak trend, based on how that, that campaign is performing, we tweak uh, you know, or we, we change the, or we give continuous feedback to the ad server in terms of how much or how the ad should be paced so that we don't over deliver or under deliver a particular campaign. So for that, we, we use this real-time pipeline to feed this, those numbers back to uh, you know, our ad server. And uh, based on that, you know, that's how we would take decisions. Um, we also have a bunch of integration. So I think real-time reporting is a quick win when it comes down to you know, a new integration that we are testing. And as soon as we, we make it live, we are able to see impressions or you know, coming on our dashboards within a minute, which is a good sign because we can catch issues or we can troubleshoot issues immediately and then you know, resolve them or take actions accordingly. And then we have alerts on the traffic velocity and as well as the revenue. So if we see a sudden drop uh, in the real time, uh, it's a good sign for us to immediately go and look at, hey, whether, the, whether there's some issue with that server or whether you know, there are some other systems which are, which are you know, uh, not, not, not performing at the way they should be. So, so yeah, so these are our real time use cases. Um, so to give more details on the real time pipeline and, and the architecture, I think I'll hand it over to Amit. Thanks. Thanks, Kunal. Um, so um, as Kunal mentioned, right, so there's um, a batch-oriented um, compute part of the platform, and there's a real-time aspect to it. And what we're going to cover today uh, from now on is going to be more on the real-time aspect. And uh, the use case on the real time is uh, the data that is uh, the bid data which have um, been successful in the bidding um, process. And that's a small portion of the main data. So um, we have about 40 billion or so transactions per day. Uh, out of that, approximately around um, two to three billion is what comes through the system. And this is where we use uh, data torrent, um, real-time cap capabilities using the Kafka uh, ingest and uh, the real-time pipeline. So quickly going through it. Um, so we have the ad servers on the left. Um, they have been dumbed down, but they actually are doing a lot of work there. And this is across multiple uh, data centers based on geographies. Um, and the second uh, input to our to this real-time platform is the client logs that comes off of the CDN network. Um, and they all go into a Kafka cluster, which is a DC specific. So um, think of this box as being replicated across various data centers. And each of that um, Kafka cluster now go to an ETL operator. Um, so on the right side, uh, that is a centralized um, system. Uh, which is running the, um, our uh, data torrent app um, and data torrent platform. Uh, so we have multiple uh, actions that happen through. So there's a decompression and flattening out of data because the data that comes in are, um, is equivalent to a CSV. It's basically ampersand and pipe delimited. So you need to parse through each of the data items that come in at real time, um, flatten it out, and then create a filtering mechanism. So there is some filtering that happens based on bot filtering and a few other filtering that we have to um, take out some uh, not really realized money and uh, bids and such. Um, after that, we aggregate the data to create various dimensions that is going to be used later on for reporting and also for ad hoc reporting. Um, and then once the aggregation has been done, it's stored in the in-memory store of data torrent. 
And that is where we use the uh, memory capability of Data Torrent to be able to store everything in memory and have the data available for real-time apps as an uh, on-demand basis. Um, the way the query works is the middleware, which is to the bottom right, is actually a component which makes a call to the Kafka cluster if there is a request to be processed, as in it needs data on a certain dimension, which might be a customer or any other kind. It's going to query the cluster. It's going to store, um, query the uh, dimension store, which is, the, which is based off of data torrent. And then the data torrent application will load it back into the Kafka cluster to be consumed by the middleware. So this is kind of the data pipeline that we have going on. But the important part is the uh, aggregation part, the data ingest. That is where a lot of the load uh, is handled. The querying part is kind of not heavily um, loaded, so to speak, but the important part is to get the real-time insights, the real-time storage, um, and real-time processing. So if you go to the next slide. Um, so quickly talking about the install footprint, we are currently using around 48 nodes, um, which amounts to about a terabyte of uh, store in memory. And of course, it's backed up on disk. So uh, Data Torrent uses HDFS and other file systems. So it first backs up to local file and then backs it up to HDFS. Um, but most of the data is in memory. And uh, so we'll go through some of the lessons learned and stuff towards the end. But um, this platform is handling about 2 billion, two to, two to 3 billion transactions or impressions per day. Um, and uh, this is kind of a footprint that we can see. Uh, you can see around 207 process messages per second. This is kind of uh, output from yesterday around 10 AM, which is kind of a busy time for us because there's a lot of folks in the East Coast and uh, all different time zones. People are all um, you know, clicking away, so to speak. Right? Yeah. So um, if we go to the next slide. So this is our um, feedback engine. Uh, this is a real-time ad server uh, feedback engine. So in short, what it does is it collects all the data from the ad server, and then it creates a um, feedback loop to s show how you know, their data is being used and how busy it is. Um, so for that, we use a multi-Kafka input um, operator. And what that means is uh, this, uh, the Kafka cluster that we have, which is on the ingest side, um, can take inputs from multiple uh, Kafka locations, which are on, uh, distributed on multiple data centers. So, so this operator is um, sitting on the data torrent um, server, servers, and uh, it consumes from multiple Kafka clusters. And uh, to quickly um, double click on that, uh, what it means is that it needs to keep track of till what time it has progressed uh, in a queue and be able to play it back or read it from the same sequence if it goes down. If either the Kafka cluster goes down or the data torrent app goes down, it needs to be able to replay it from the time it stopped. So it's kind of a safety mechanism in case there is a failure of network or any other um, situation. Um, so it goes through that, and then it computes the so similar pipeline. So it processes the events, goes through the dimension computation, and then stores the um, the results, right? And then um, this is uh, is kind of a, a summarization and aggregation routine wherein the data is crunched down quite a lot. So as a result, we are able to store it in a MySQL kind of a store. So we have a JDBC operator at the end. Uh, so this is the, we have two separate pipelines right now in production. Uh, this is the lower use, I would say. The second one is a bit more heavily used. If you want to go to the next one. Um, so this is the second flow. Um, we're showing the DAG of that. Uh, as you can see, the peak um, at the tracker dimension computation is around 89,000 um, tuples being computed per second. Uh, so this is real-time traffic around the same time yesterday. Um, so this is where a lot of the volume and the compute and the in-memory store of data torrent has been used. And of course, it uses APEX. So, so it's that whole ecosystem that is kind of doing the computes. Um, go on to the next one. So this is the flow of the uh, tracker data. So tracker data, as I mentioned, summarized earlier, 
is the successful bids that has come through the system, which is a small portion of the entire 43 billion um, that we uh, process on a daily, which is a typical volume. Uh, so this is approximately around uh, two to three billion uh, transactions a day. Um, so similarly here, uh, we have uh, input operator, and this is also multi, uh, multi Kafka input operator. It goes to multiple data centers, gathers the data, and it knows where to replay the data from if it needs to as a checkpoint. And then process the event, it does a filtering as well, and then stores it in a dimension. Um, some processing details in terms of how uh, we are using it. So this is a simple roll-up that we uh, have implemented. There are approximately 35 such dimensions that we compute. And uh, out of them, uh, so we're just showing about five or six. So we can see they are publisher level um, data, and they're rolled up by days or by minutes. So this is basically the, uh, if a publisher wants to log into our console and they want to see how much of their revenue is being generated, they can actually go see it. And we have minute level rollups as well. Um, the other thing that we also do, um, which is basically just a subset of all the computes that we do, is the filtering of uh, IP, IP range filtering. So this is for bots and such, so that we can filter out and um, weed out the not, not good transactions. Um, so we have used a couple of, I think we already go th went through the uh, multi-Kafka input operator. Um, that's for multi-DC um, support. A um, couple of important things I wanted to highlight here is it does support idempotency and uh, exactly one semantics. And uh, so that's kind of important for us to make sure that we don't double count any of the revenue that is being sent out from our publishers. Uh, it has to be fault tolerant. So if either Kafka cluster goes down or data torrent uh, app goes down or the network fails, it, it needs to be able to play the messages back in the order it was received and exactly once as well. Um, the other important thing that we are using is the dimension store, which is an in-memory store on data torrent. Um, it's distributed and also resilient, as in it has all the data in memory and also backs it up to the local disk first, and then from there it spills it over to the HDFS system. Um, so that's kind of an important uh, feature for us to have because in case the D data torrent app goes down or there's a network failure, we need to be able to uh, bring up the system back to the previous state it was in. And uh, there is about, I think, a minute or so delay. So from the time there is a dimension that is computed to the time it makes it out to the disk is about a minute. So in case the cluster goes down or we have a network outage, uh, the maximum amount of data that we lose in the compute is about a minute's data, so which is acceptable. Um, yeah, we can go to the next one. In terms of our learnings and challenges that we have faced, a uh, couple of things. First of all um, is the DAG, which basically we have to be able to um, logically pan out the flow that we want the data to be processed at and how it gets stored. So there is some planning and um, some kind of uh, parallelism as well to be computed. And if you have multiple data tracks or multiple data pipelines that needs to get implemented, you need to ensure that the, uh, there is spare capacity for each of them. Uh, similarly, the memory sizing is an important part wherein uh, based upon how big the cluster is, you've got to be able to compute the amount of memory that should be allocated to each of the different pipelines that we have. Um, cardinality is another part of it. Upstream operators. So, um, so this is, uh, especially in our use case, what happens is we have about um, 3 billion or so transactions coming in. And by the time we finally do aggregation, we are doing uh, at the max a minute level rollups. So approximately one to 20 um, degradation or whatever reduction of data is there. So our, our data pipeline upfront or upstream is gonna be more busy than downstream. So that's kind of the, uh, when we allocate resources to the DAGs, you have to make sure that we allocate resources in an appropriate fashion, um, which, is, uh, which would be specific to each flow that we have or one would have. And for us, it's kind of downstream are less loaded than the upstream apps, upstream uh, DAGs. 
there is some, some amount of back pressure that the downstream apps can, um, downstream app, uh, DAGs can put forward onto the upstream, um, and which might be affected by upstream failures. The other one, uh, the last one is kind of important, is you need to think and plan for fault tolerance and be able to, uh, you know, be able to replay messages or um, design the system so that there is a uh, write over to the disk or a spill over to the disk along with a backup on the disk as well and along with the DFS. So, so that's kind of the design consideration that we have gone through. Um, it's been running in our production for about more than two years, um, and uh, we have been updating the system as and when new patches come out from the vendor as well. Um, so yeah, it's been kind of good. There are new technologies out there as well, um, but uh, this seems to have served the purpose for quite some time now, so that's all we have. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for a great talk. Uh, so your uh, real-time pipeline seems to have two components. One is coming from the client mm -hmm. and the ones from server, assuming there are latency staggers there because the you know, you know, cloud-based client is probably not the simultaneously sending these uh, logs along with the server. So how do you handle it in inside Apex with the streams having time stagger in them in terms of computation of dimensions or, and or facts? Or is that not a problem for you? So um, right now, I think there are two different streams, but they are still based on a similar form of data. So we have, uh, so we are not today doing uh, like a merge or a join between two sets of data. We have two separate streams, one which is our uh, you know, at the client side logs. The other one is also a similar log from a different system. So we have a guaranteed uh, ad server which is feeding into the uh, feedback loop. So where we are uh, allocating or where we are calculating the aggregates and then feeding it back to the ad server. That's a separate pipeline, and then we have a separate pipeline which is, you know, our, our you know, our uh, uh, ad server, the other other part of it, which basically. Uh, is is doing all the real time graphs and stuff on you different. Do not have a reconciliation problem between the two streams. Probably. Yeah, the so two, two the two pipelines are two separate things. They are two separate use cases, so they're not as is connected. So they're not doing yeah. any joins or some. some there are two different sets of data. So yeah, I mean we have had this uh, discussions over the past, like how do we dedupe and show like uh, uh, you know uh, numbers from server and the client side, but we haven't we haven't gone there so far. Yeah, so it's a tough problem to solve. Yeah, it's a tough yeah, problem to solve. It's a tough problem to solve. Hello, hello. I have uh, two questions. Uh, the fir first question is how do you actually um, uh, prevent the duplication from the Kafka? The second question is uh, um, how do you estimate the uh, Kafka capacity? Sorry, we didn't get the first question. Yeah, first question. Uh, the first question is, uh, you have a multiple Kafka running on the system, right? Yes. How do you actually prevent the duplication event from the Kafka, I mean, stored in the database? Okay, so duplication is not the scenario because um, these multiple Kafka clusters are basically addressing geographically different Ad servers altogether, so we have you know data centers running in New York, um, Amsterdam, you know, so all these uh, Kafka clusters are addressing one. So, so uh, to answer that question, I think duplication is not the the, the problem. Uh, in terms of estimation, yes, it is a tough problem. I think uh, we uh, have. Uh, you know, we we have some past data which we have al which we which we basically uh, uh, have al al leverage to basically come up with that. The other other thing that I mentioned earlier, right? For us, peaks are like the actual capacity, like not not like the average. So we always cover for peak and at least thirty percent more than the peak. So we know we know that you know uh, based on the trends that of the past years that we are going to hit this peak. So we always kind of uh, over capacitate. So 
last question. Maybe last okay. Okay. So last question. Here we go. So my question is about the distributed store, the in-memory store. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a number of open source stores like that. Uh, Geo is one that comes to mind, and IMDB, and uh, there's proprietary solutions like Hazelcast. I'm wondering if you evaluated those or whether you wrote your own and, and why you made the decision you did. So I, I asking about why we went with JetTorrent and not the other open source projects which are doing real time. Uh, no, but in particular about the data store. Oh, you data said store. said you have an in-memory data store, distributed yes. data store. Yes. That's that's not something that's directly provided by DataTorrent, right? No. So so yeah. yeah go so go ahead. Yeah. So I mean, when I said in-memory data store, I meant uh, the one that is provided by Data Torrent when you kind of install the software on your hardware, Hadoop hardware that is there. So that is what provides the in-memory store and the ability to store results in memory. Um, so that's kind of oh, our I solution. see. Okay. Yeah, I misunderstood the statement. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Thank All right. You, thank everyone. you, everyone. Thanks a lot.